privilege to have both Dr. Jean Cumby with us, our special collections librarian, as well as local historian, Deej Webb is there at the front hey. desk checking out books. <laughs> <laughs> Needs a book. <laughs> but I am so proud of this exhibition for a number of reasons. It's a collaborative effort as always, and Lynn Laukoff, I see there, helped organize the show as one of our special collections volunteers. A number of other volunteers in the room helped work with Jamie closely over the last several months to cull through the treasure trove of archives that are found here at Pequot Library. And our emphasis is on the village of Southport. And this was a dream that we had a couple years ago, Dr. Beth Bowden and I planted this seed. We've been thinking about this a long time. And I'm just delighted that tonight we're able to share this all with you. We also could not have done it without our friends and peers at a couple local organizations. One being the Connecticut Historical Society in Hartford lent us a color lithograph that Dr. Cumby will speak about shortly. It's here in this case. And we also have benefited from our dear friends and colleagues at the Fairfield Museum and History Center. They've donated a couple objects from their collection, but otherwise, everything you see in the cases and on the walls from the Pequot Library Special Collections. And so you all uh, should be very proud of what's found here. I want to invite you back for a full formal sit-down lecture in the auditorium Tuesday, July 9th with Deej Webb, and he'll be talking about his talk in conjunction with this exhibition, <clears throat> Death Southport, Death, Disease, and Economic Life, 1742 to 1919. That's July 9th. And I expect a crowd three times this size. I really do. So be sure to get a great seat that Tuesday night. I hope you can join us. It's at 7 p.m. and it'll be in the auditorium. But tonight, we're lucky to have Jamie here with us to kick things off. She'll talk about something here in this case. Then we'll move over to the gallery uh, there, the Perkin Gallery. And Deej will talk a bit about his talk next week, giving us a little sneak peek. I thank you all for being here so very much. Dr. Combi. Well, thank you. All. Thank you all again so, so much for being here. This is a really, truly fantastic turnout. It is so much more than before. Um, I'm just so excited to share this show with you because it's your history. Um, and it is an absolute delight to be able to bring it out from our archives to you, the people who live in this town, who are the members of this community, that, and, and this, is, this is your story. Um, and I wanted to start this talk with really my favorite part of this exhibit, because it's a little bit um, gruesome, it's a little bit exciting, and it's a lot of it unknown. Um, <laughs> so this whole case is um, about the worst steamship disaster that happened on Long Island Sound, and it happened right outside of Southport Harbor. And this has been discussed throughout the scholarship. It's something that's very known. It's something very exciting. In fact, there are several thousand dollars of gold and silver bullion sitting at the bottom of the sound in the wreck of the ship um, that are still undiscovered. So if anybody wants to strap on some flippers <laughs> and kick a little bit of that our way. <laughs> but, um, what hasn't been discussed about this disaster is its connection with Southport, because the materials that talk about it have been in Pequot Library. Um, and they are here in this case tonight. Um, so of course, this is the lithograph of uh, the Lexington disaster. I'll walk you through quickly. It was a dark and stormy night. Um, <laughs> on uh, January 13th, 1840, the Lexington was the fastest passenger steamship on the Sound. It had been originally commissioned by Cornelius Vanderbilt in 1834, but at this point Vanderbilt had sold it on and it was running between New York and Stonington because Stonington was where the railway went up to Boston. So this steamship was on a timetable and the crew was stoking the boiler to try and get across the cold choppy sea to make their train. Um, and as happened shockingly frequently in the 19th century, the boiler overheated and it ignited and this might have been a disaster that could have been salvaged but they had packed 150 bales of cotton in tightly to the boiler and then the next thing you know the entire
entire ship, including the fantastic mahogany panel great room, was an inferno. Um, there were 133 crew and passengers on board, and four survived. Um, because this happened in the middle of the night, it's about three in the morning when the accounts say you start to see um, the blaze. And you could, you could see it and you could hear it from South Port. Um, Cyrus Sherwood Bradley, who is, uh, was a fanatical local historian, um, a little bit like a 19th century Deej, we might say, <laughs> um, donated a lot of um, South Port, uh, a lot of uh, Pequot's uh, archival materials to the library, and he wrote a poem um, in one of his little commonplace books um, about seeing it as a child. Um, but, so this, this happened in the middle of the night, and the tide was low, and there was one sloop in the harbor. It was the, the sloop Merchant, and Merchant couldn't get out. Um, and we know this because this is the handwritten account of the captain of the Merchant, um, who uh, the captain, John F. Bulkley, who, seeing the disaster, frantically tried to mobilize his crew. They couldn't get out. They couldn't get the small boats out, and they realized... We have to wait until morning. Um, and this is the story of his process of looking for the survivors. And um, this, I think, is really the, the thing, the object that I'm most excited about in this entire exhibition. It's this book right here. In and of itself, it's a pretty common 19th century edition of Coleridge's Ace to Reflection. But what is special about this? is that it was in the pocket of the pilot of the Lexington, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Merchant, and um, he was clinging to a bale of cotton in the sound, wondering whether he was going to live or die, and he was reading this book. And when he was rescued by Bulkley, um, he had it with him still, and in a gesture of appreciation for the kindness that the people of Southport showed him when he was rescued, he donated it to Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. And in 1901, the rector of Trinity Church gave it to the Pequot Library. Mm -hmm. And it is here, in this case right now. The binding, of course, it's been rebound in 1855. The original binding was so soaked. But you can see some of the water damage. That's those little spots and foxing. Um, but that is that artifact from that disaster. Um, and that's one of the, uh, the many extraordinary things uh, that we have in, uh, in Pequot Special Collections.